Hello everyone, welcome to another tips and tricks video. In this video, we will see how to create a piping in three different ways. This video is divided into three parts and you can skip ahead using the timestamps in the description. The first method that we will see is using the piping tool. You all must have seen the two piping tools in your 3D toolbar. We have the piping and edit piping tool. Using the piping tool, you can add piping anywhere along these dotted lines or the edges of your pattern as well as the seam lines in your garments. I'm going to add piping in my placket. So I'm going to simply click once to start, move my cursor along the placket and double click to end. Once the piping is added, you can change the parameters of the piping like the width, the name, the particle distance, the fabric color, etc. I'm going to start by changing the color of this piping. In order to do that, I'm going to add a fabric into the object browser. I'm going to change the color of this fabric to black for better visibility of the piping. And once that is done, I am just going to go back, select my piping and assign this to the new fabric that we've created. I'm also reducing the width and the particle distance of my piping. I'm now going to simulate this and I will have my piping ready. As I mentioned earlier, we can also create pipings on seam lines as well. So I'm going to create a piping along this seam here. So I'm going to click once to start, go around the seam and double click to end. Here as well, I'm going to reduce the width and the particle distance of my piping. Now all I need to do is simulate this and the piping on my seam line will be ready as well. One limitation that we found while using the piping tool is that the corner of the piping, if you see here, remains open. This really can't be closed. So there are two more alternative methods that you can follow to create a piping with a closed edge. The second method that we will see is creating a piping using a pattern and the additional thickness render property. I'm going to create the pattern here along my collar. So I'm going to start by creating a pattern where the width is the same length as my collar edge and I'm going to keep the height at 1 mm. You can increase this depending on how big you want the piping to be. Now I'm going to sew this pattern onto the edge of the collar. And once I'm done sewing it, I'm just going to reposition this closer to the collar for a smoother simulation. I'm also reducing the particle distance to 2 since this is a really tiny pattern. And I'm going to simulate this to attach the piece to the collar. I'm just going to quickly strengthen this pattern once so that it falls properly without any crinkles as such. I'm going to give it time to settle down and unstrengthen this pattern again. Now I'm going to change the value of the additional thickness render to sort of give it the rounded um, shape. So right now when it's zero, you can see it's quite flat. When I change it to one, the thickness makes the pattern look more rounded and more like a piping. And if I change this to two, you can see the difference from the previous one. And it's sort of thicker than before. You can decide what value you want to give depending on how big or how thick you want your piping to look. So I'm going to leave this at one so that it matches the pipe, matches my previous pipings as well. Now in this method, we are able to close up the edges of the piping as well. So in order to do that, I'm going to stitch up the edges of my piping pattern to the pattern of the collar stand. I'm going to do this on both the sides and simulate so the edges are completely closed up. I'm also going to change the particle distance of the piping pattern to 0.8 because it's a really small pattern. 
And when I simulate, we have the piping done. The next method is by using a folded pattern piece. I'm making this piping at the hem of my cuff. So I'm going to start by making a pattern that is the same length as the cuff. And I'm going to keep the height at 4 mm. This is so that we have enough of the pattern to be folded in as well. I am also changing the particle distance of this pattern to 1 because this is also a smaller pattern. Next, I'm going to sew this pattern up to the cuff and assign this to the same black fabric that we've been using for the previous pipings as well. And using the superimpose side option, I'm going to arrange my pattern next to the cuff in 3D window. Next, I'm going to offset an internal line in the center that is at 2mm of my pattern. And using the fold arrangement tool, I'm going to fold this pattern up. I'm also going to secure the top edges of my folded pattern and change this to turn seam type. And once I simulate, I will have a folded piping attached to the cuff. Now the edges of my piping are still not secure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and first I'm going to stitch up the side edges of the folded pattern and change this also into a turned seam. Next, I'm going to secure the starting and the ending points of my patterns together. Once I do that, I have a completely secured closed piping pattern done. I'm going to change the additional thickness collision to a 1 so that the folded patterns don't create too much collision with each other. Once the pattern is completely sewn on, change the fold angle of the internal line to a 180 degrees and turn off the fold rendering option as well. Now all I need to do is simulate and my piping will be done. So once I have the piping completed on one side, all I need to do is clone this pattern symmetrically to the other side as well. I may need to rearrange the pattern slightly closer to my sleeve, to the cuff. And just as easily, I can create the piping on my other sleeve as well. So now we have all the three different pipings that we did. Do try it out and I hope you enjoyed the video.